Ladies and gentlemen, if you've seen a soldier donning his or her uniform, you will know that his pride lies there. The uniform is not just a piece of clothing. It's an armor that carries tradition. It carries history. It carries patriotism. It carries discipline. It's an armor that subsumes caste, class, and religion and unites the forces in a bond that is often greater than brotherhood. Now, many soldiers will tell you that the best death is one in the uniform. And therefore, when the news came in that the Indian Navy was tinkering with tradition and going Indian with its uniform, it was bound to divide the armed forces. This is what has happened. Officers of the Indian Navy will now be able to wear the kurta pajamas in their messes. The Navy order has come as part of the ongoing effort to Indianize the armed forces and drop the quote-unquote colonial baggage they carry. The Navy has, in the last two years, in fact, identified and changed colonial era practices and symbols in line with Prime Minister Modi's directive for quote-unquote gulami ki mansikta se mukti. Now, the repeated reference to this phrase has not gone down very well with veterans. In fact, it has drawn a sharp reaction from a former Navy chief, no less. Admiral Arun Prakash, in a tweet today, has said, and I quote, it is unnecessary and in poor taste to harp on so-called gulami ki virasat because it casts aspersions on the post-independence generations of patriotic Indian Navy personnel who have served the Navy and the nation and fought wars and shed blood. Essentially, what... Then how is it that these uniforms are now being referred to as gulami ki virasat or a symbol of slave mentality? Now, kurta and pajamas in Navy messes is only the latest. There has been a sea of changes in the Indian Navy in the recent past. The Navy is Indianizing its ranks for personnel below the officer rank. But more importantly, the Navy has a new president's standard and colors as well as crest. This after its new Swadeshi ensign, which now bears the seal of Chhatrapati Shivaji. Now, the Indianization project is not limited to the Navy. The Indian Army launched Operation Udbhav to study ancient Sanskrit and Tamil texts from the 4th century BCE to the 8th century to rediscover the country's rich heritage in statecraft, warcraft, diplomacy and grand strategy. There's nothing wrong in that. But where is the name need to change names? Because that is in the offing as well, changing the names of regiments. The beating retreat ceremony that dates back to 17th century England, well, it now carries all Indian tunes. So why is all of this happening? You'd probably remember Prime Minister Modi's address from the ramparts of the Red Fourth on India's 76th Independence Day in 2022. He asserted the need to liberate India from the slavery of mindset, which is visible in innumerable things he said within and around us. Listen in. Hame Gulami ki choti si choti. Sivaji Maharaj ki virasat ki jalag bhi dekhne ko milne wali hai. Bharatiya Nausena ab apne ranks ka naam karan Bharatiya paramparao ke anurup karne ja rahi hai. So, Rajpath is now called Kartavipath and King George V statue has been replaced with that of Subhash Chandra Bose's. Indian tunes are being played at the beating retreat ceremony. There's a new National War Memorial, which we are very proud of. And the Amar Jawan Jyoti that used to be at the India Gate has been merged with the Eternal Flame at this National War Memorial. Andaman and Nicobar Islands have been renamed. A new parliament is in place. And several British-era laws have been repealed and they needed to be repealed. But the issue at hand today is the kurta pajama in naval messes. And whether a uniform after 75 years can suddenly be seen as a symbol of slavery. Now, one understands the intent to shed our colonial past. But the question is, are we overdoing it? I'm putting that question to my guests this evening who are joining me for a very quick chat. 
Vice Admiral Shekhar Sinha is a former Chief of Integrated Defence Staff joining us on the broadcast. Major General Dhruv Katoch is the Director of the India Foundation joining us on the broadcast as well. And Major General uh, Dr. Yashmore is a Defence Analyst joining us as well. Gentlemen, I want to hear from all three of you because I'm fairly certain that all three of you carry different views. But General Moore, I'm going to come to you first. Do you find merit in what Admiral Prakash is saying? I completely, for one, understand the need to Indianize some part of our armed forces. But does it mean that you have to tinker with every tradition that has been in place and has served us well in the last 76 years? Uh, firstly, Shreya, thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, discussion on your show late at night. I feel I belong to the oldest infantry battalion of the Indian Army, three generations in the Army. We are totally Indianized already. Mm. So many changes in uniform have taken place. But why are we so much into optics? And why are we trying to please, uh, you know, uh, our political leaders by saying Gulami ki mansikta? I think that was, uh, uh, Navy could have done without that. You wear dhoti kurta or even pajama is, a, I think, an import. We should be wearing dhoti. So it's okay. It's okay if we change uniforms. We can change flags. We can change ranks. Regimental mm. uh, names can be changed, war mm. cries can be changed, anything can be changed, whatever the current leadership uh, uh, feels like. But at least don't feel the people who fought for this war, a country in 47, 48, 65, 71, Kargil, they were fighting for, with some gulami ki mansikta. Mm. I think using this kind of uh, terms is really change in applets, mm. very, very minor optics, but being uh, put across on Twitter and all as though it's, these are big things. These are very minor things. And I totally agree with what Admiral Anu Prakash okay. says he's a he's got a Veer Chakra in 71 war. He's he's a war veteran who fought with the Air Force, a naval chief, highly respected for professional integrity and and is a professional acumen. So I, I, I totally I read the tweet and I agree with him what he says. No, we uh, we we all admire and respect Admiral Prakash, which is why we uh, we are having this discussion because he's he's a man who has experience. He's a man uh, who has served this nation very well, and therefore what he says is important and becomes uh, a focus of discussion at least in some section of this country. Vice Admiral Shekhar Sinha, I want to ask you where you stand. My point is, uh, you know the. the uh, and I think I agree to some extent with what Major General Moore is saying. It's all right if you want to make these changes. Great, make these changes. But why should everything be about removing gulami ki virasat? I mean, if, you, if you're calling your uniforms gulami ki virasat, for the last 76 years, these gulami ki virasats have served you very well. And, 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 and my bigger problem is that words and terms like gulami ki virasat are political terms. Major General Yashmore is calling it optics. It's not optics, it's actually political optics. Well, Shreya, thank you for getting me on the program. You see, when politicians talk, they want some mileage to be, you know, accrued to them. And it is just that. If you ask him, does he not realize that Gulami ki, this has served us for 75 years, we have won wars. So he also knows it. But then since he's been so much into, uh, you know, let's remove everything old. So therefore, that term has been used. I am quite sure that, you know, he certainly, if somebody goes and tells him, he will realize that this is, this is okay for a political sort of discourse, but it is not okay for a military discourse, right? So I would, I would say that. As far as these changes of uh, uh, ranks are concerned, the ranks will be renamed in Hindi only of below officers rank okay officers there is no rank change correct and uh, the coast guard already uses it in hindi terms right from the time they came into being so there is not something new mm. as far as the uh, being allowed inside naval messes i don't think that's his problem i think his problem uh, is the fact that there is a political agenda clearly at play. And I'm not saying when I say agenda, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a negative agenda. I mean, it can also mean that it's a positive agenda to Indianize India's armed forces. But when you use political terms like gulami ki virasat, <coughs> etc., you know, a politician can use it. The prime minister can say it. But should the Navy be saying it in its press release officially as the reason to allow kurta pajamas inside India's naval messes? That is the question. Major General yeah. Dhruv Katoch, will you come in here? All of us have been very proud about the fact that our forces are apolitical. 
does this reflect to you does the way the navy is pitching the entire kurta pajama debate uh, does it imply to you that 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 boundary has been crossed that the politicians left the armed forces alone and the armed forces left the left the politicians al uh, alone that boundary has now been crossed according to you general katoch Uh, thank you, Shreya. Shreya, let me give you my views uh, in this particular um, discussion which is taking place. Uh, but getting back to your immediate question, has the boundary been crossed? Um, you see, uh, there is a great deal of misunderstanding as what is politicization of the armed forces. What does it mean? And uh, if, if people, uh, if the military personnel are meeting politicians, that is construed as being political. I don't think that is the correct uh, discussion, that is the correct interpretation at all. Politicizing the army means that the army leadership gets involved in influencing the result of elections, in telling the command which way to vote, you see. And in giving, your, uh, giving the troops a particular agenda that this party is good and this party is bad and we will go this particular manner. That is when the army is politicized. Mm. I don't see it happening. So the politicization bit, I think it has been overdone. Mm. Most people don't understand it. <coughs> uh, any interaction between a military leader and a politician, uh, you know, the hackles are raised. But please remember, even in the Second World War, when Churchill asked Slim... You know, the war had ended uh, and uh, elections were going to take place. And Slim very well told him because they were downsizing the army. And Slim told him, um, you know, Prime Minister, my army is not going to vote for you. You see, he was not a political figure and the army was not politicized. So we must get that aspect very, very clear. The Indian army is not politicized. The Pakistan army, yes, they control politics. Oh. The Indian army has no say in politics. Mm. We don't control politics. It is not politicized. Mm. But getting back to the, the second part of the discussion, you see, uh, as far as uh, coloniality is concerned or colonialism is concerned, when we are looking at the country as a whole, leave aside mm. the armed forces, I think for a very long time, we are still clinging on to things, you know, like uh, what, uh, what had happened in earlier times. And we take that as the golden yardstick, that that is right and what we are doing is wrong. Hmm. You know, today, if a music, uh, if, uh, uh, a music award is given, uh, uh, you know, abroad, it carries great weight. If it is given in India, it, carries, it doesn't carry that same uh, charisma. Now, that, I think, is the problem of coloniality. India is still suffering from coloniality. Uh, and that, I think, is something which the Prime Minister referred to. The second example I want to give you, you see, okay. uh, when, the, when the railway budget or the, when the Indian Parliament is to convene, you know, they convened in the evening. No, that was to conform to British timings uh, when India was not free. And we continued with that for decades and on end till we put a stop to that practice. I think we need to be very careful uh, as far as this is concerned. But one more point I want to give is the use of words. Okay, General Katoj. I mean, I, I think we should be very careful about the Haan, use of words. Ahead. And to say it is gulami, it is not correct, mm -hmm. right? Uh, no, it, it, gulami is not a correct word to use, right? These are customs. A dress is a custom. Mm -hmm. It is not a tradition. So there, the customarily, dresses will change. Mm -hmm. The tunes in beating retreat will change. Why? You can even stop beating the retreat. You can stop the mm -hmm. Republic Day Parade. What will happen 50 years or 100 years from now? Correct. These are customs. Customs do change along with times. Traditions are different. Traditions I, are something I long term, you see. I, traditions I of understand. heroism, traditions of bravery. No, so I that understand. Is one. Yes. Okay. Maybe, uh, we could say that uh, beating retreat dates back to 17th century England. Iski humko kya zarurat hai? Hatao isko. Lekin aap, where will you stop? Major General Katoj, my point is, where will you stop? A. Secondly, fact is that all these changes that we are seeing within India's armed forces, Army, Navy, Air Force, these are not emanating from within the armed forces. These are coming from outside. They are coming from the political ecosystem. It is an agenda that is being set by politicians for India's military, which is why I'm talking about interference in India's military and whether India's military is being politicized. That was the limited point, General Katoj, I was trying to make in case uh, you'd want to say anything on that and then I'll go to General Moore for more on that.
No, I, I agree with you. You see that uh, uh, if the politicians are pressurizing the military hierarchy, but then I will put it to you this way, why is the military hierarchy getting pressurized? You see, you are, if you have risen to the highest possible ranks, then I presume you should stand your ground. I won't blame any politician for it. Then the fault lies within us. So I think I need to look inside what I have okay. done, what my predecessors have done, and what the young officers of today will do. Okay. Uh, Major General Moore, would you want to come in here about, about uh, politicized... Uh, about politicization of India's military. I think, I know that I'm stretching the point, but, uh, but the sentiment I'm con trying to convey is simple, that if there was a need felt within the armed forces to change the insignia of the Navy or the Indian Air Force, or, you know, bring in uh, the kurta pajama in naval messes, etc., I would have understood that these are forces that are changing with times and adapting to the times we live in and adapting to the, uh, to the needs of the men and women that serve it. But the point is that these changes are not emanating from within the services. Uh, they are emanating actually, from a uh, place where you want to completely disown your past. I to even don't understand where is the need to be ashamed of your colonial past. You know, our, our past is a past. We cannot reinvent absolutely. it. We cannot formulate a new past. So you might as well be proud of it and run with it. Exactly, exactly, Shreya. And all these things that are taking place now, Shreya, this use of, uh, you know, uh, uh, learning from our ancient texts. 30 years back when I did staff college, there were so many officers mm -hmm. doing their, uh, you know, dissertation on uh, Arsh Shastra. Um, we were not going to Twitter and singing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, telling the whole world about it. Army War College was always encouraging officers to do MPhil, MSc and PhD on Arsh Shastra and, you know, on uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji or Maharik and Zingoism is being added to this. I mean, uh, Navy Air Force don't require it. We, we need direction from politicians how to be, uh, you know, more, uh, you know, uh, proficient, how to be how to be able to achieve our objectives, how to get technology uh, into it, how to improve training of our people, how to ensure that our people, when they go to villages, uh, DCs and SPs, listen to them. There we, we see how our men are treated. So these are the issues the politicians should take up. And Army, Navy, Air Force must be tinkered with. Theater command, yes, we need... Uh, political sagacity to change feudal systems. I'm totally for change of systems. Mm. But don't create optics. Don't create hawa hamne badal diya. Small minor changes you can't even recognize in that applets and you call it a big thing. So naval chief and all mm. must stay a little away from this because it is not going down well with the rank and file of the of the, of the the forces that I can tell you because they will go after some time. And uh, they, what kind of legacy will they leave behind? So leadership... They must stand and the leadership must say, yeah, our chief or was like this and this was the changes we brought and changes must be brought. Absolutely. There's no harm okay. in changing uniforms and ranks and with time we must change. Why not? Hmm. Why not? But Vice Admiral Shekhar Sina, the last word to you then. Uh, was this political optics, and I will call it political optics uh, because the terminology used was uh, uh, Gulami ki mansikta, uh, was this kind of rhetoric really required by the Indian Navy? And, and, and should our forces just stay away from this political optics and rhetoric? Apne jo karna hai karo. Uniform change karni hai karo. You are absolutely right, Shreya. But, the but you know, the, 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 don't, don't quote it in these optics which people will see through. See, the letter which, has, which people are quoting, it was issued from the Eastern Naval Command Headquarters hmm. for the units down below. There was no need to write this. It has made sacrifices for you. you so see, you Shreya, demean it when you call it Gulami ki virasat. This is yes, not Gulami Shreya. ki virasat. Shreya, I, just single point is that letter which has been issued, firstly, it should not have been issued. And if you issue the letter, you just talk about hmm. uniforms. You don't talk about the, you know, the terminology which has been used outside. Because nobody is going to buy this. Hmm. So what you're saying is right, but you have to see hmm. this in two hmm. parts. One part is so-and-so thing has been said in political discourse. Should that discourse, should that word have come in the letter? Answer is no, it should not have come in the letter. Hmm. Okay, Vice Admiral Shekhar Sinha, thank you very much for joining us. I think we all agree to the point that uh, the wording of the letter that was passed down to the troops was... Uh, uh, was unfortunate, actually. More than anything else, it was unfortunate. Uh, sure, you want to change the uniform, you, you want to make things more liberal, go ahead, do that. 
uh, but just be careful about the reasoning that you give out for it. You give out a political reasoning and people will debate it. It is something yeah. that a former naval chief, someone who is a highly decorated soldier, has pointed out to. And it's something that many naval veterans are pointing out to as well. So hope uh, the Indian Navy and the highest echelons in the Indian Navy uh, take cognizance of the sentiment of retired veterans. Thank you very much, Major General Katoch, for joining us as well. Major General Moore, thank you very much for joining us this evening. I know this is way okay. past your bedtime, gentlemen. I understand that. So a double thank you to all of you. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you, you Shia.